I'm Pat Dugat. This screencast is about simplifying rational expressions and complex fractions using techniques that involve multiplying and dividing. So let's take something like the rational expression you see here, and it's a rational expression, expression because it can be written as a ratio. So we have 3y times y plus 7 all divided by y plus 7 times y squared minus 9. So what we want to do with this is look for what the numerator and denominator have in common. And in this case, they both have a y plus 7. So y plus 7 divided by y plus 7 cancels out. And I'm left with 3y over y squared minus 9. And that's all I can do there. Now, to find out when this expression is undefined, because um, with rational expressions, that can happen. Rational expressions, you'll recall, are undefined when the denominator is equal to 0. The original factor denominator is y plus 7 times y minus 3 times y plus 3. That's because y squared minus 9 factors to y minus 3 times y plus 3. So what you see here is the factored denominator. So values that would make the denominator equal to 0 in using the zero product property, in other words, if this whole thing were set equal to 0, y plus 7 could equal 0, y minus 3 could equal 0, and y plus 3 could equal 0. Therefore, the values of negative 7, y equals negative 7 makes the first part 0, y equals 3 makes the second part 0, and y equals negative 3 make the third part 0. So all three of those values would make this undefined. So this rational expression cannot exist at those points. Let's look at simplifying a rational expression. So we have a to the fourth times b minus 2a to the fourth divided by 2a to the third minus a to the third b. So first thing we want to try to do here is factor using the greatest common factor of both the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, what both terms have in common is an a to the fourth. And in the denominator, what both things have in common is an a to the third. So we're going to go ahead and factor out that a to the fourth out of the numerator, which leaves us with, in the first term, b minus 2. And then if we factor out an a to the third, in the denominator, we're left with 2 minus b. So a to the fourth divided by a to the third, using our properties of exponents, the quotient rule, is a to the four minus three, or a to the one. And then b minus two divided by two minus b. What would I would do? What I would do there is rewrite two minus b as negative one times b minus two. So the denominator can be reversed by factoring out a negative 1. So negative 1 times b minus 2 is the same as 2 minus b. Now the b minus 2's cancel out, because I have 1 in the num numerator, 1 in the denominator, and I'm left with a divided by negative 1, or negative a. So if we have two terms, like this b minus 2 and this 2 minus b, that are reversed, they can be simplified by factoring one of them out with a negative 1. To multiply rational expressions of any type, multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. And so uh, that's that was true when you learned about fractions long ago. It's true with any rational expression of variables. So if we have one, one expression called a over b and another one called c over d, as long as the denominators b and d are not 0, then a over b times c over d is the product of the numerators, ac, divided by the product of the denominators, bd. For dividing rational expressions, you will multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. Invert and multiply, you may have heard. So a divided by b divided by c divided by d is equal to a over b times the reciprocal of c over d, which is d over c. So it then becomes ad divided by bc. So, to multiply these two rational expressions, we're going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. But before you do that, sometimes it's helpful to look and see if you can simplify it in some way. For example, 8 goes into 16 two times. 
So 8 divided by 16 is the same as 1 over 2. And then 7 goes into 21 three times. So that's the same as 1 over 3. So we can actually get rid of all of these coefficient numbers by just simplifying a little bit. And then we'll multiply the numerators. X, y, x times y to the second, and then multiply the denominators. x to the third times y to the third. Now we're going to simplify. 2 times 3 is 6. x divided by x to the third, it's going to be x to the first over x to the third is x to the minus 2, or x to the 2 in the denominator. And then you'll recall also y to the second over y to the third is going to be y to the minus 1 or 1 over y. Now you would have gotten the same answer if you would just gone ahead and multiply 8 times 7, 56 in the beginning, and then 21 times 16. You're still going to wind up getting 1 over 6, but it's far easier to simplify in that first step. Now, to divide rational expressions, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction, or the second rational expression. So this is going to be 10mk squared over 3c squared d times 6c squared d squared divided by 5m to the fifth. I've, I've um, taken the reciprocal of that second term. Now I'm, I'm looking to see if there's anything that goes into 10 and 5 and 6 and 3, and yes indeed they do. Um, 10 divided by 5 is 2 in the numerator. 6 divided by 3 is 2 in the numerator. Then I have, I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything else out. I've got um, m k squared c squared d squared divided by 6c squared d times m to the fifth. And then I'm going to look and see what cancels out. I'm just going to go from left to right here. m divided by m to the fifth is m to the fourth in the denominator. There are no other k squared terms. c squared divided by c squared, c is going to cancel out. d squared divided by d is d to the 2 minus 1, or d to the 1 in the numerator. And so my answer is 4k squared d divided by m to the fourth. Now, if I have polynomials instead of just monomial terms, it becomes a little bit more complicated, but the same principles apply. k minus 3 over k plus 1 times 1 minus k squared divided by k squared minus 4k plus 3, and I multiply. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is go ahead and factor that. Can't really do anything to the first term. But 1 minus k squared, you might recall, factors down to 1 minus k times 1 plus k. There is no middle term. Denominator of this second term factors out. The two terms have to multiply to give me 3. And add to give me negative 4. So the only way that's going to happen is if I have k minus 3 times k minus 1. So now you're going to see that some things are going to go ahead and factor out. There's a k minus 3 in the numerator and the denominator. There's a k plus 1, which is the same as 1 plus k in the numerator and the denominator. And so what that leaves me with is 1 minus k over k minus 1. And you'll recall from earlier in the lesson, since these two terms are reversed, I can factor out a negative 1 um, out of one of these. If I take a negative 1 out of 1 minus k, I get, I get k minus 1 divided by k minus 1. The k minus 1s are going to cancel out. And all I'm left with here, all this polynomial boiled down to negative 1. Let's do a division with polynomials. Uh, division with polynomials works just the same as division with monomials. We're going to take that second term and find its, get its reciprocal and then multiply. So I've got 2d plus 6 divided by d squared plus d minus 2 times the reciprocal. 
d squared plus 3d plus 2 over d plus 3. Now I'm going to do a little bit of factoring. In the first numerator, I can factor out a 2. Uh, taking out a 2 out of 2d plus 6, because 2 is the greatest common factor, leaves me with d plus 3. Factoring the denominator of the first term. d squared plus d minus 2 factors 2. Two numbers that multiply to give me negative 2. And the bigger one has to be positive because the middle term is positive. So it's d plus 2 times d minus 1. And then this reciprocal second term, the numerator factors, d squared plus 3d plus 2 factors 2. Everything's positive. I need to multiply to give me 2 and add to give me 1. So I get d plus 2 times d plus 1. I'm sorry, they add to give me 3. 2d plus d is 3d. And then the denominator remains the same as d plus 3. Things we can factor out. There's a d plus 3 in the numerator and the denominators. There is a d plus 2. So that's about all I can do to simplify this. In the end, it becomes 2 times d plus 1 over d minus 1. Or if you prefer, by distributing, both are equally. Okay, even complex looking polynomial fractions can be simplified using the same processes. Um, here's a, a pretty nasty looking one. If we look on this as the numerator and this is the denominator, or look on it as a division problem, this can be written as x squared divided by 9x squared minus 4y squared divided by the denominator, x to the third, divided by 2 y minus 3x, which I can then turn into a multiplication problem by re taking the reciprocal of the second term. x squared divided by x to the third is going to give me an x in the denominator. 9x squared minus 4y squared does factor into 3x minus 2y times 3x plus 2y because there is no middle term. And then I have this 2y minus 3x. Now again, at first glance, this doesn't look like it's any simpler. However, if I factor out a negative 1 because 2y minus 3x and 3x minus 2y are really almost the same thing. If I factor out a negative 1 out of the numerator, I get 3x minus 2y. All divided by x times 3x minus 2y times 3x plus 2y. And what happens is the 3x minus 2y in the numerator and the denominator cancel out and voila, I am left with 1 divided by x times 3x plus 2y. This concludes this screencast on simplifying rational expressions and complex fractions using multiplication and division.